Hello, and welcome to the first lecture in the Introduction to Branding Unit. I know all of you are keen to sink your teeth into social media, but first things first. One of the key secrets to social media, or any kind of marketing for that matter, is understanding branding. If your marketing activities aren't tied into your brand strategy and your business strategy, it's kind of like driving down a very dark road at night without your headlights on. You might get lucky and make it home safely, chances are you won't. So think about branding as your headlights on a dark night on an unlit road, guiding your progress on your journey. This unit will be the most theoretical unit within your integrated marketing studies. Like any intangible thing, branding requires thought and imagination. While it may be theoretical, branding is nonetheless fundamentally important. A branding strategy that is informed by, informed for your business strategy can achieve solid results for the short term, the medium term, and the long term. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, let me put myself into something of a context. I was the CEO of Aardvark Records for many, many years. I was also its head of marketing. And when I joined Aardvark back in 2003, it was an unbranded and fairly unknown record label in music publishing business. It was a kind of part hobby, part business of by the, the chap who actually owned the label. Using the approaches, tips, and tricks that I'll be covering through this whole series of integrated marketing units and lectures, I turned an unknown entity into an internationally respected, innovative, profitable music business with an incredibly strong brand identity. And the same applied to our recording artists as well. This was achieved with only a minimum budget spend in the beginning, really a pittance compared to what, ma what major record labels and major publishing companies actually spend. One of the things I would like you to remember as you make your way through this part of the course is that the branding options available to you are scalable. By that I mean you can start with little to no budget at all and build it upwards should you want to do so when you have the revenue to do so. The only thing you really require to get started are a strategy, time, and imagination. We'll be working together to develop the first and the last of these. So without further ado, let's get started. All of the sessions I teach come with clearly stated learning aims and outcomes. I do this so you can clearly understand what I want you to take away from each of our sessions together. I also provide them so you can gauge whether or not you've understood the main points from each session. In other words, have you learned what I wanted you to? If I gave you a spot quiz on our ne next session, could you demonstrate that you've actually learned what I wanted you to from this session? Each session builds upon what you've learned from all of the previous sessions. As for the branding sessions, I will constantly be referring back to the lessons from the overall branding unit, again and again and again. So these learning aims and outcomes are really, really important. In this particular session, we're going to begin things fairly gently. As you'll see from the learning aims and outcomes on the screen, it's a general understanding of the concept of branding, including its overarching importance. So that's the main, main thing that I want you to take away from this particular session. Take a few minutes to read through this classic textbook definition of branding. And by all means, feel free to pause the video. Okay, so while this is a textbook definition, it's a very useful place to start. As you would imagine, branding is about creating an understanding of difference. Why is one product different from a rival product? Uniqueness is branding's language. It's one of the reasons for branding even existing. Branding has other phases, which we'll be examining in far greater detail throughout this unit. At their most basic, primordial level, brands are promises that an audience believes in. You establish your brand by building trust in a one-of-a-kind promise about who you are, what you stand for, and what unique and meaningful benefits your business, organization, product, or service delivers. Branding establishes presence. 
For instance, when I joined Aardvark Records, neither the company nor its artists had any kind of presence. Creating a branded presence was one of the first things I was tasked with accomplishing. And by presence, I basically mean just appearing on people's radar, them becoming familiar with your product or your service, and you know, basically your name. Branding establishes relevance. And by relevance, I mean a brand solves a person's problems. It answers a person's question or it fulfills a person's needs or aspirations. A brand is relevant to their world, their life, or the things someone wants to accomplish. Significance is influenced by the perceptions people have about a brand, including their emotions, their emotional responses to that brand. Establishing significance is key to building loyal followers for a brand, and is something we'll be focusing on in much, more gra much greater detail throughout the whole series of this unit. Branding frames conversations with an audience. Once you understand how branding creates the perception and understanding of uniqueness, relevance, and presence, you will understand how these determine, or frame in other words, the kinds of conversations that we have with an audience. In this session, and indeed throughout this entire unit, I, ne I don't refer to people as customers. That's a really old and old-fashioned and counterproductive way of, of viewing people who interact with our products or services. You may come across or hear the word customer used in the various videos and readings supplied within the sessions and units. Um, I'd ask you that you mentally substitute the word customer with audience. Companies that think about people in terms of customers basically engage in one-way communication. They don't really want to hear from customers, even if they have a customer service department. On the whole, the word customer has a pretty negative perception and connotation. Audience, on the other hand, has positive perceptions. Audiences they participate. We have two-way conversations, exchanges, and experiences with audiences. Again, this is something that we'll, we will explore much more fully together throughout this entire unit, but it's worth mentioning now. Framing conversations saves a great deal of energy. Framing helps us identify what we want to say to an audience, how we want to say it, and more importantly, why we want to say it. Framing our audience conversations also allows us to make sure that what we're saying to an audience remains consistent. No matter what we're saying, no matter how we have to tweak the same conversations when speaking to slightly different audiences, and no matter what tools or vehicles we use to convey those conversations. Framing our brand conversations is strategic, as the bullet points in this slide outlines. I'll give you a little time to take a look at them, or if you'd like to pause the video now, that's fine. So we spent a little time outlining why branding is important, and a little bit about what it does. But what is it? What is branding? This is the first part of that answer. When a person hears your name, or your product's name, they have a visual in their head. This picture can be good or bad. In the worst case scenario, they won't have any picture at all. The picture that they see in their head is your brand. At its most basic level, a brand is created through associations. It doesn't have a physical presence. It is a representation, an abstraction. A brand is not the same as a product or service that it represents. Think of it more as a virtual ambassador. A brand is everything that goes along with your product, service, or business that creates an image or an emotional response. Sticking with the ambassador or representative metaphor, here are some things that represent a, br a brand that you'll already be familiar with. Your business card or letterhead your company history, staff profiles on a website, mission statements, feedback from your audience, 
your logo, your website, how you introduce yourself, especially when you go to things like networking events, style guides. Well, actually, technically speaking, a brand isn't these things, but it does include them. And I'm going to elaborate about that a, a little bit more. Many people think that a logo is the brand, but in fact, a logo is just one representation of a brand. Your brand isn't how you look or what you say. It isn't even what you sell. Your brand is what people believe you stand for. A couple of examples. Starbucks sells coffee. Yet, in its, its audience's mind, it represents daily inspiration. That's the message that it sends. That's the message that its audience receives. Apple sells computers. It stands for thinking differently. Disney sells animated and amusement park family entertainment. It stands for making dreams come true. Your brand lives in audiences' minds. So branding is the process of developing consumer beliefs and perceptions that are accurate and in alignment with what you want your brand to be. That's so important, I'm going to say it again twice so that can sink in. Your brand lives in your audience's minds. So branding is the process of developing consumer audiences, beliefs, and perceptions that are accurate and in alignment with what you want your brand to be. So the process is you send a message out, and the branding part of it is the message that you send is exactly what audiences believe it to be. However, there is a fundamentally more important aspect of a brand. In a way, a brand is a contract that a business, organization, or service has with its audience. A brand makes promises to specific audiences about what it offers, why it's different, and how it's the best solution to solving a problem, answering a question, or satisfying an aspiration, want, or desire. Branding is the process of delivering that promise. To be truly effective, that promise needs to be linked to your overall business strategy. Think about it. All of your significant purchase, purchases address some problem, issue, or aspiration, or even desire that you have at the time of the purchase. Why that video game over another one? Why that album? Why that particular brand of makeup, or handbag, or shoes? Why those trainers? Why that movie over another one? Why that magazine? Why that particular make of car? Or that smartphone? What branding messages prompted you to make that decision? What previous experience did you have with that brand? For instance, I only buy HTC smartphones, and no, this is not a paid advertisement for HTC. I won't even entertain buying another brand, unless of course HTC does something to change my experience with its brand. I understand the promise that HTC delivers, and that the, that promise matches quite nicely with my needs in a way that a rival smartphone brand just doesn't. That in essence is the power of a brand. It clearly articulates a value, typically something that doesn't have anything to do with money or price, in the form of a promise and an experience. Take a minute just to think about your own significant purchases. Think about the choices you've made, the messages you heard, or the previous experience you had that influenced why you bought that particular item. Then start thinking, in a f then start thinking about its non-monetary value. This is something we refer to as a value proposition. A little further on, you'll hear me exchange things like value proposition and brand equity. Every brand has one. It's a concept we'll be working on in the brand strategy sessions of this particular unit. It's an important concept to familiar, familiarize yourself with on this particular course. 
you will be asked to explicitly state value propositions in your course and tutorial assignments. This single concept and your evidenced understanding and practice with it will form about 15% of your overall mark for this unit. Now this next bit is a really tricky concept for a lot of people to get their head around in the beginning. Tricky though it may be, it is nonetheless true. Your brand isn't about what you say. A brand is about what an audience says, more accurately, experiences. You may frame your brand and frame the conversation your brand has with an audience, but it will be your audience that defines it and gives it its value. This is a tricky notion, as I said, to get your head around, but it is a really fundamentally important concept for you to understand. It may seem like a terrifying proposition to some, but it is what it is. The clever brand knows the value and relevance it has with its audience, and it uses this knowledge to fine-tune the framing of its messages. Why would it do that? There's no point in framing messages, much less sending any, that, are directly that aren't directly relevant to an audience. It's a waste of time, effort, and in some cases, money. Spam is called spam for a reason. Spam is hated for a reason. Spam is never relevant to our needs, our aspirations, or our problems. Spam is like trying to hit a pinata with a blindfold on, or playing pin the tail of the, on the donkey. Spam never transmits value. Branding, sp specifically strategic branding, always transmits value. Branding ensures that we treat an audience with respect and that we don't waste its time. Basically, branding puts our, our audience in the driver's seat. No matter how fabulous, miraculous, or awesome it is the thing that we do or that we sell, it means nothing if we make it all about us and not about our audience. So, on the screen you'll see some essential characteristics of brands. We've briefly touched on how a brand is a contract, a promise. We've also touched on how we need to deliver a promise that an audience believes in through relevance. Taking this to the next level, a brand also immerses an audience in an experience. We do this through establishing connections based on emotions, perceptions, thoughts, and memories. Retail brand, brands actually extend this by creating an entire in-store environment. What makes Trader Joe's different from Whole Foods? What makes Gap different from, oh, I don't know, Urban Outfitters or Abercrombie & Fitch? What makes Harrods any different from John Lewis? Many brands, however, exist entirely online. As such, their real estate is virtual and can include websites, blogs, and other online spaces. Used wisely and well, and informed by a strategic brand strategy, the online experience for an audience can be as powerful, as enriching, and as absorbing as those achieved in the physical world. And on the screen, you'll see two fundamental brand truths. Brands deliver in order to, first, Build trust through a promise about who you are, what you stand for, and what unique and meaningful benefits you deliver. Again, an aspect of value propositions. The values a brand communicates and how that meets an audience's needs, requirements, or aspirations. Second point. Brands also live up to a promise every single time people come into contact with your name, your message, or your business. It makes no difference whether that contact comes through advertising, publicity, word of mouth, the actual buying or purchasing experience, customer service, billings, returns, or other, some other form of ongoing communication. 
brands essentially exist in order to deliver. And they deliver in order to strengthen your business, service, or product by constantly reinforcing your brand promise. If encounters with your brand are inconsistent or not in keeping with what people were expecting, you essentially, you're breaking your promise. This undermines your brand and you risk your reputation and possibly your actual business as well. Some examples of this latter one would be the GM and Toyota car recalls over the last couple of years. Uh, the horse meat scandal in UK frozen foods. Come to that matter in the US, the whole horse meat scandal in um, Burger King burgers. The news is littered with negative brand stories like these. Some brands are really lucky and they can recover. Others, however, they're not so fortunate. Why do so many companies, businesses, and services spend so much time developing brands? On the one hand, branding is it's very strategic. It ensures that all aspects of a business, a product, or a service are 100% aligned to a, an overall business strategy, or at least they ought to be. Branding insists that we completely understand our business, our product, or service, and by that I mean what it is, why we do it, why we're passionate about it, and why it's different from any other similar product, service, or business available. It makes us communicate these things clearly and succinctly. In other words, branding makes fundamentally good business sense. There are other less obvious and less tangible benefits to be had as well. And some of these include brands create trust and emotional attachments with an audience. Something I'm gonna be spending a great deal of time going over in this particular unit. When established, brands foster relationships between our audience and products that can withstand external pressures. Things like pricing wars, new competitors, and can even overcome rare lapses in your product or service excellence. Great brands, big and small, aren't just known and trusted. Eventually, they, they are loved. There's another reason why businesses and services spend so much time in, in developing brands. It's because brands actually have big payoffs. And these payoffs actually give your brand certain strengths. So one payoff, for instance, when people are aware of your brand, they're aware of all of the positive characteristics that you stand for. They feel they know who you are and what unique value they can count on for you to deliver. Another payoff would be brand owners can concentrate on the wants and needs of their audience rather than taking up valuable time trying to explain themselves and their brand's unique attributes. And the, last the last one's quite an important one to think about. Think about a situation where you have to keep reintroducing yourself because you failed to make an impression. That's like your business, your service, or your product not having a brand identity. Every time you launch something new, you have to give a backstory about what it is, what it is you do, or you make, or you produce, or why you even do it. So instead of concentrating on introducing yourself to new audience members, or getting new members of the public really excited about what it is you do or produce, you have to continually reintroduce, reintroduce yourself to your old audience at the same time as you're trying to get a new audience excited. That's just simply exhausting. And in the long run, it's very impractical. Brand owners, they don't need to launch new offerings from scratch. They can actually grow their businesses by leveraging their brands into new products and new line extensions. They already have that identity. They already have that percentage, perception. All they have to do is keep it consistent and build on it as they launch, as I said, new products and new lines. Without a brand, you have to build a case for why you deserve the consumer's business every single time you get, you get ready to make a sale. Branding is a process and a cycle that involves the actions shown in the diagram above. We'll specifically address each one of these stages in the various sessions of this unit. 
For now, this is just a basic overview, just so you know how the different components all, the process all fit together. So first in the process, let's, let's start with product definition. You can brand products, services, businesses, even people or personalities, but you can't start the branding process without first knowing what it is you're trying to brand and whether or not your brand is going to be a one and only item or one of several items. This is something we'll address in the next session. Secondly, we have positioning. Each brand needs to fill a unique, meaningful niche in the marketplace and, in, and also within your audience's mind. To determine your product's point of difference and the unique position it and only it fills within the market, we'll cover this aspect in session five of this particular unit. Next, we have promise. The promise you make and keep is the backbone of your brand and the basis of your reputation. This, as you can imagine, is a huge topic, and we'll cover various aspects of this in sessions four, five, and six. Next, we have presentation. How you present your brand can make or break your ability to develop con consumer interest and credibility in your offering. You can start with a great name and logo, and then launch your marketplace communications with strategic, compelling stories. Well, you know, while I'll be introducing you to the basics of this part of the process in this unit, this is a subject we will continually revisit throughout the entire course. Next, we have persistence. This is the point in the branding cycle where too many brands just simply lose steam. After brands are launched, brand owners often get tired of their own kind of look and messages, and they begin to try to improve things with a new look and new messages and even new brand per personalities and promises. Just when consistency is is the most necessary thing in order to gain clarity and confidence in the marketplace. Brands that kind of get tired and want to just kind of radically change things, things can tend to go off track a bit. So the, the strategy sessions in this unit addresses this in a lot more depth. Last but not least, we have perception analysis. In an audience's mind, which is as we've been saying, where brands live and thrive, a brand is a set of beliefs about what a company offers, promises, and stands for. Great brands continually monitor their brand's perceptions just to make sure that they're still in alignment with the brand owner's aspirations, which would be you, and that those aspirations are in sync with an audience's wants and needs. Again, this is a really kind of big topic and we'll be focusing on these issues in the strategies that strategy sessions within this unit. So to wrap things up in this session, it's worth remembering two fundamental things that often get overlooked when it comes to branding. The starting place for an integrated brand communication plan is you. You define what your brand is or what your client or employer's brand is and you work in partnership with an audience in articulating and communicating that brand's value. So, I look forward to seeing you in session two.